this is like what shopping meant, guys. So I told you like the shock that I had when I came to America, going to Walmart and later Costco. I couldn't believe the choices and selections they had. I didn't even know the most of the items, what they were, what they were they for eating or decorating. I had no clue. When I was on the motorcycle, I thought I was flying without getting into actual car. You know that was so fast to me. I I thought like I couldn't even breathe how fast it was. Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Yeonmi Park. I am a North Korean defector, human rights activist. Today in this video, I'm going to do something new. I will show you the pictures that is worth more than thousand words. I really believe that these photos will help you to understand what is happening to North Korean people and how they are surviving under Kim Jong-un. So this first photo can show you the actually the unbelievable height difference between North Korean soldier and American and South Korean soldier. Obviously you can tell the middle one is North Korean soldier. And even he is right there, the ones that go into DMZ in the demilitarized zone are usually one of the ones that the tallest that North Korea pick. They mainly pick soldiers for their height to go there so they can present to the world that oh, North Korean soldiers are not that malnourished. But even that, the best of the best, the tallest of the tallest is this height. Look at the South Korean soldier and American soldier. North Korea and South Korea, there is average 4 inch height difference on average. And among the younger generation, the ones in South Korea not knowing the poverty and anything, they are even way taller than us, more than 4 inch taller than average North Korean young generation. And this is what the, the malnutrition, chronic malnutrition did to North Korean population. But the, the side effect of malnutrition is not just the height difference. It, until, when you're until 5, you don't get the proper nutrition, your brain even don't develop, develop that well. And this is the, the damage that Kim regime did to North Korean population that we will never know truly the extent of it. The, now the number two, these are the photos of children's manual work. In my previous videos, I talked about how North Korean children, when they go to school, forced to work. And every afternoon or even all day through when there is a farming season, harvesting season, we work. And children are also another free labor for North Korean regime. Like, you know, women, military, children, everybody is like free laborer. And as you can see, I think though they are pushing um, this carriage. And as you can see that, I think that is a teacher and other ones are classmates in the, I think they went to, to the farm to help out the farmers. And I also remember we would get mobilized a lot in the spring and the fall. And also even during the summertime, you know, they would call something monegi. We go to the farm and get rid of the all other plants that is not a grain. And it's, unbelievable daunting work. I would get this like back aches, was working the field so much and they give you a quota. And if you don't finish your quota as a child, they don't even let you rest and have your lunch or water break. So teachers would be uh, watching there and then like, did you finish your quota? And I don't even, I can't even tell these children for North Korean standard, I bet there are something only teenagers, but you know, the malnutrition makes it make them look like to me now like five, seven years old comparing given I have a son who is almost this size by age of almost three. Um and yeah, the second photo here is also this kids when we uh North Korea of course they proudly claim themselves as socialist paradise. So they make, they are doing their best 
to make the country look nicer for the foreigners. And when they do that, of course, they use children and they make us to go paint those things like the tree under there, those uh, the side row, those decorations. We have to go paint them. And as you can see, those are children also mobilized for this work. Uh, it's more pictures of this. Uh, we, we call that like, um, so in North Korea, we don't really use the cars or trucks to moving things, usually all requiring labor and manually pu pushing things. And when someone gets uh, break their legs or going to even em emergency room, we don't have like 911 ambulance to call. We usually ask our neighbor who has those. You know, even that is not common. That's a very precious thing. And then we borrow it and then take somebody go to hospital like that. Emergency use and that is almost the main uh, transportation that and how people handle things in that country. And lastly, this photo of these two young girls are carrying water. And usually we carry them on, on top of our head and that's uh, how we, we don't have running water at home, obviously. So we go to the where the river, anywhere that has some fresh water, we would go and carry those water. And I think in that way, I always say that's why like if I were born here, I could be tall enough to be a mother. But, you know, doing all those manual work, just by the time when you're born, like three, four, you started working and helping out your parents and school. It really doesn't make us to get taller anyway. And believe it or not, I'm like only five to tons of my fellow North Korean defectors, even they are men. And a lot of them actually are short, shorter than me. And that's why, you know, among the North Koreans, I cannot tell them like I'm too short. And even though I'm so petite in, in America. And this is also, I think they are helping out the, you know, in the, in the fall, maybe harvesting and we dry those corns so we can like sell them in the black market or we can have keep them in the winter time those not undried corns do not last that long so it's our job to dry them and make sure no bugs get into them and sort them and doing those manual work but i chose select this photo because i mean there's skin color has no notation in it like there is nothing good or bad but what i'm saying is that usually north koreans are like uh, light as similar to south koreans as you can see we have the same blood and we had the same country for thousands of years but when you look at the North Korean kids or pictures they look really really tan because of course one we don't know what sunscreen is and we are constantly being in in the nature so when I escaped I wasn't this like pale like now I used to be like so so brown and I somehow thought that was my skin color but you know, in North Korea, there's no other way. So we never thought being a darker skin was something, a negative thing. It was just something, oh, maybe this is my skin color. But when we finally go to South Korea using sunscreen, realize like oh, how we truly looked like before. Uh, now, this is a section where it clearly shows the food shortage situation. I think these women are, of course, mobilized in the farm. Or actually, they might be just uh, looking for some, you know, nice way to say salad or plants to help their family and feed them through these outsourced things. And this man's photo really like remind of my father actually a lot. Uh, even though this man is wearing his government official um, uniform. And he is looking for plants to subsidize the lack of food. And you can see the, just, you know, just like, I never see those kind of oppressive 
faces unless in other North Koreans. Like defectors don't have that face, of course, once we get freed. But whenever I look at North Koreans' face, they have this expression that nobody else could make unless they are that oppressed. And this also photo shows why I was so offended when I came to the West seeing people, you know, eating salad. Because I used to think that was something I mean, I had to do it to survive and now coming to the West, people are eating plants too for health. It is kind of funny world that we are living in for sure. And these last few photos, this is a girl trying to show the foreigners that they have a computer and they are as modern as the rest of the world. But the electricity was gone and they did not know what to do and they tr still try to pretend they are doing the computer. And uh, this photographer, uh, you know, brave enough to take this picture and show the reality how when the foreigners go, the regime, everything is a horse show and lie. And these two photos in the black market shows actually, I think, the real poverty and oppression. This is a, uh, I think, I think it's a mom and her children next to her, just accompanying her, and she's hoping to sell something. This is like what shopping meant, guys. So. I told you like the shock that I had when I came to America going to Walmart and later Costco. I couldn't believe the choices and selections they had. I didn't even know the most of the items, what they were, what they were they for eating or decorating, I had no clue. And this is like what normal black market shopping looks like for North Koreans. Uh, usually this is one corner, they sell few types of candies, maybe one type few cigarettes, like really few things right there. And the other one also, this grandma, or maybe my mom's age, I have no clue, because North Koreans, by the time when they're 60, we think they lived a long time enough, so she shouldn't be even 60, and selling the similar stuff. And these things are also a lot of times illegal, so officials come and demand the bribes, but the thing is also, officials don't get paid while their salary doesn't even afford them to survive one day. So without bribes, they don't survive. So everyone can't survive in that system other than Kim Jong-un. And this, we talk, we talk them as like grasshopper traders. They have to be running away like grasshoppers whenever the officials come and demand bribes. So you, as you can see, their stands are very portable, easy for them to run and go somewhere else and sell. Uh, this is, I think, to me, is a really grassroots of the free marketization in North Korea. And but the the speed is very slow to come to the free market that we have here. I don't know how long it will, will take, but at least that free marketization, the seed has been plant, planted in North Korea. Uh, the last picture I just picked, it was just like out of um, just interesting thing. So as you can see, the guy who drives his motorcycle, he's really high ranking uh, official in the, in, the, in the intelligence, I think, seeing his uh, uniform. And they have these high ranking officials, they get motorcycles like that. And you see that mom has her child in the behind back. As a mom, I actually noticed those things more. That is like actually the fanciest, you know, when I was on the motorcycle, I thought I was flying without getting into actual car, you know, that was so fast to me. I, I thought like I couldn't even breathe how fast it was. And in North Korea, there's no such a thing called like car seat. This is what shocked me when I became mother in free, free world that there was so much like safety things that you had to do for your child, like getting a creep, and you know, preventing for them like not able to breathe, getting the firm mattress. Like, what is a firm mattress? Never even knew what mattress was or crib was in my whole life. Never had those fake bottles. If the mom is not able to have natural milk, we would give them some sugar water or cook the rice and spoon feed them. There's no such a thing like CP cup, and of course, car seat. Nobody has a car seat in general population and there's not much to understand how to keep the child safe and even that i think we can see that you know they are 
this mom and nobody has a helmet going into this motorcycle having this infant behind and now i'm thinking about doing that here in freedom i will go to jail for sure anyway guys i hope that these photos you know helped you to understand real north korea and also i'm very grateful for the photographers who took these photos and got them out I you know it's very dangerous act what they did, but they they had this amazing responsibility and, and shared real North Korea with us. So thank you so much for watching this video today, and let me know if you have any uh, content suggestions. I look forward to seeing you guys all next time.